Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a very quick preset tutorial talking about tracing particles. So let's start. So here we're in Blender and uh, here is a very simple setup. I have an object containing a geometry node emitting particles. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, geometry nodes cannot read information from all the particle system as far as I can see. Uh, perhaps it can, but if it cannot, you probably want to do particle simulation in geometry nodes, which is relatively easy. I've discussed this in the past, but it's not a topic today, so I will just uh, skip that part. Okay. So assume you have an object or node tree emitting particles, then we want to trace these particles or points or mesh uh, to generate kind of trails. Okay. And uh, basically that's the topic today. So let's create a new object and let's go into geometry node tree. And uh, here I'm going to import this particle mesh into my node tree so that I can hide that. And if I play this animation, I can still see my points uh, floating around. And uh, basically the preset is just a color tracer. Uh, very, very simple. And we do not see anything because uh, one reason is that this contains a simulation zone. Uh, you have to play the animation in order to see the simulation. Another reason is I turn off the overlay so that we will not see curves without it. You can make them into actual mesh by beveling it, which is basically just curved mesh. Okay. You get a source called by idea and uh, basically that's it. Okay. Uh, there are many different ways to make tracer. Some people are point instancing curve for every point. Um, but uh, here I'm generating actual curve uh, to trace particles. This means uh, a kind of benefit of it is that you can take a set curve radius. You can take a spline parameter to give it a different thickness. Or you can also train this curve if you want. Here you may notice that there is already a train start in this tracer. This is because this train curve is inside the simulation zone, which means as you're growing this spline, it will be trimmed at the same time. So that's, you do not always have uh, something on the root. Okay. So whichever way you wish, this is basically the idea. The actual implementation of this tracer is relatively easy. I've uh, talked about a similar concept in the past in which you just extrude the vertices of a curve. But we're inputting a mesh, so you need to curve to mesh. And to get a mesh back to curve, you need to mesh to curve. Okay. And uh, in order to get the data from next the frame, we need to sample index of the position attribute. And we sample by index, but this index should be for every spline so you can evaluate on domain, which is a spline domain. Uh, but another problem is that we're inputting actual points, not a, a curve. So before we actually curve to match, we need to generate the curves. Then we need to take a point instance to get a curve line. And of course we need to realize the instance, but that's another story. Starting from 4.0, uh, we will have ability to convert the points to curve. So this is a node called points to curve, but it's not a, as straightforward as it sounds like uh, for this purpose particularly. So I'd rather use all the method. It does not really matter. Whichever way you want, as long as you can get the result, it should be fine. 
Um, so basically, this is kind of idea. For details, you can go to this group node. The actual implementation is a little bit more tricky uh, from what I described uh, because I did not only input a geometry from the beginning, I also input the geometry into the middle because I have to trace particles uh, when they are newly generated. But anyway, uh, if you want, you can break it down. And at the last, I just want to mention that you do not only need to trace particles. It can be any kind of things as long as you wish. So here, let's just uh, make a Suzanne monkey. Where is my Suzanne monkey? Yes. And we can import our Suzanne monkeys, take that to relative and start to trace it. So let's uh, increase the timeline, maybe to 1 billion, whatever stuff. And if I animate it, then you see. Uh, because we turn on this uh, trim, so you can see the uh, lines being trimmed. And of course, you can always add a random value to this uh, trim value so that the sum will be trimmed, the sum will not. Randomness is the key for a good animation. So basically, this is it. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.